Late Show one and all. Thank you so much. Have a seat, everybody. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Look, how are you guys feeling tonight? You feeling good? Yes. That reaction right there is why we don't do this show on the Mexican border, because... <laughs> so happy down there. Because the big story continues to be the Trump administration's policy of forcibly separating immigrant children from their parents, and faced with almost universal condemnation from both sides of the political aisle, from religious leaders, from the UN Human Rights Council, Donald Trump finally took full responsibility for the policy and promised a swift end to this humanitarian disaster. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he blamed the Democrats, tweeting, the Democrats are forcing the breakup of families at the border with their horrible and cruel legislative agenda. Any immigration bill must have full funding for the wall and catch and release visa lottery and chain and go to merit-based immigration. Go for it. Win! <laughs> what do you... What is that? What does that, that mean? What are you talking about? What does that mean? Ooh. What does that mean? Go for it. Win. Ready? Okay. <laughs> Two. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we incarcerate? Kids. Go into the cages. Yeah. And it's sad, didn't it? There are two things wrong with this. One, if it was a law, the Republicans are in control of everything. They can fix it. Second of all, it's not a law. This is a policy. It's just another scoop from your chum bucket of cruelty. Trump says he regrets having to do this, but, and this is a sentence I never thought I would utter, he justified his child prisons in the middle of a speech about his new Space Force. The United States will not be a migrant camp and it will not be a refugee-holding facility. No, it'll be the all-baby reboot of the Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> but... Oh, oh. Oh. Not everyone oh. in the administration blames this policy on the Democrats. Some say the policy doesn't even exist. Like Secretary of Homeland Security and definitely not the descendant of immigrants, Kirstjen Nielsen... <laughs> who tweeted yesterday, we do not have a policy of separating families at the border, period. Then why are you locking up kids in an abandoned Walmart? Question mark, exclamation point, colon, with your head up it. <laughs> then, this morning, this morning, this morning, Nielsen made this shocking claim. We do not have the luxury of pretending that all individuals coming to this country as a family unit are in fact a family. Yes, who can tell if these weeping toddlers are part of a family? They might not even be toddlers. They might be adults with shoes on their knees. <laughs> Dorf. Nielsen, ask your grandparents. Nielsen, Nielsen went on. We have to do our job. We will not apologize for doing for our job. Yes, they're not going to apologize. What would that even look like? We've taken your children hostage. Sorry. <laughs> And Nielsen's not the only one defending this tactic. So is White House senior policy advisor Stephen Miller, seen here in his prom photo. <laughs> dead, just dead, just dead. He calls separating children from their parents a potent tool for stopping migrants from flooding across the border, which is fitting because I've always thought of Stephen Miller as a potent tool. <laughs> of course. Impotent. I'm sorry. Impotent. Sorry. Uh, that's not true. I've always thought of it as an impotent tool. Of course, <laughs> no national policy is complete until it has been vetted by the Fox and Friends. Some refer to these as cages, uh, and I can understand that point of view. I, look, I'm from a farm community. To me, I see the chain link fences. It's more like a, like a security pen to me. Yes. They're not cages, they're pens. We're not treating these kids like zoo animals. We're treating them like farm animals. <laughs> but the best reaction came from Border Patrol because they reached out to CBS this morning, this morning. Border Patrol people have reached out to us. They are very uncomfortable in their words with his characterization of the words cages. They said it's not inaccurate, but they're very uncomfortable. 
Oh. <laughs> it's accurate. That's what's making them uncomfortable. That's like reading Hansel and Gretel and saying, it's accurate to say the witch eats children, but she lives in a house of candy. Where else is she supposed to get her protein? <laughs> Trump's defenders are wrong and they are bad, but it's important to give the devil his due. He's a sponsor. So, <laughs> it's time for our new segment, The Devil's Advocate! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Lucifer here. You know, imprisoning children has been getting a lot of bad press recently, but the prison, is that really the worst place for kids? I mean, have you been to a Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> Some people refer to these facilities as cages, but on the other hoof. You see, <laughs> I'm from a rural part of hell, and to me, they look more like pens where we make Charles Manson fight Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. It was the slave stuff. <laughs> and these little criminals have got it made. They learn how to flush a toilet, which is good because the people defending this are full of crap. <laughs> By the way, Jeff Sessions, see you soon. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Before I return to the Lake of Fire, catch my guest spot this week on Kevin Can Wait. What? Cancelled? But they killed his first wife! That's hilarious! <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Benicio Del Toro is here for Black the Turn. Trump looks up. One of his heroes, Kim Jong-un. Stick around.